Right, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope everyone is getting ready for the midterm on Monday. Just a few comments about the exam. Um, it is in person right here. And um, one of the questions typically is, are calculators allowed? Uh, you probably won't need one, but yeah, you are allowed to cal use calculator. It is a closed book. Um, there will be a review session for the um, for the midterm, which will be conducted by Arjav on Friday, in lesson 14 from 5 to 7 p.m. It should hopefully also be recorded. Um, I have given out a sample, a set of sample questions, and hopefully uh, Arjav will go over those. Uh, I will provide you the solutions before that. And if you have any questions uh, or you need any clarifications, you can ask those in the review session. Uh, there's also um, a tutorial uh, today. I hope you've seen that on, um, um, on Piazza. It is from 4 to 5 p.m. And it should also be recorded. And that's specifically for um, Java and covering assignment number three, which is going to be due, I believe, at the end of next week. Right, um, those are the basic announcements. Um, so uh, let's get on with our lecture today. So uh, one of the topics that will be covered uh, in the exam is complexity. And we've spent a fair amount of um, time on complexity, but today I'm going to be spending a lot more time on that and to be uh, doing some com comparisons between arrays and linked lists, okay? And so that is an important topic. Um, the rest of the topics will probably not be covered in the midterm, but, but we'll see. And I'll, I'll mention that towards the end of the lecture as well. If I don't, just remind me. Um, so let's talk about complexity comparisons. Right. So now complexity comes in when you're talking about a question as follows, right? So let's say you have a use case and you want to say, well, this is a typical example that I've been speaking about earlier as well. Let's say you want to store a bunch of numbers. And this could be, let's say, uh, new students, you're registering new students, you don't know how many students are going to show up. So you don't have a very good idea as to the size of the array that you want to be able to pre-allocate, okay? So if you don't have a good size, then the question is, which data structure would you want to use? Would you want to use an array data structure or a linked list, okay? A static array versus a linked list. So in order to be able to, uh, to respond to such questions, let's try to understand complexity, okay? So an analysis of complexity should be able to give you a better idea as to how to answer such questions, okay? So let's start with um, a simple array, and we'll consider um, an array which has a bunch of integers in it, and these are unsorted. So here's the example. So you have an array A, and it has um, integers, as you can see, which are not in any particular order. And now let's consider three scenarios, right? So you have the best case, the average, and the worst case. So now I need your participation, and I would like you to answer the question for each one of these slots. You can raise your hand, but I will also be expecting an explanation, okay? So let's start with the top left corner, all right? So what would be the best case complexity for doing a search? Now, each one of these is fairly trivial, I would say, but uh, the explanation may not be so trivial. So, yeah, the gentleman back, yeah, go ahead. So, if you're doing a search and uh, you're looking for the best case now, think about the best case. This is, that's order one, right? Now, can you explain that? Right. So, so the best case is generally not very uh, interesting, okay? It sort of assumes, uh, you know, the, the perfect scenario that the first element that you're looking for is the one that you're looking for, and so uh, order of one, yes. What about the average case? Somebody else? What would be the average complexity in a big O notation for a search in an unordered array? You're looking for a particular element. So how, how long will it take the average? Yeah. 
Okay, can you explain that? Exactly, right? So uh, you might think that it's actually um, the amount of time would be if the worst case, and you've sort of answered that as well, if the worst case is order of n, in which case you're basically searching through the entire array because it's unsorted, you don't know where that particular element is. If that is order of n, then the average would be n upon 2. But as you know that if you're looking at the big O notation, you drop the constant. So n upon 2 is basically a constant of 0 0.5. So you drop that and it becomes order of n. So if you give order of n upon 2 as the answer, you won't get full credit. Right? So you have to simplify the order of uh, n, uh, the, the big O notation to its simplest form. Okay? So the correct answer is o, big O of n in both of these cases. Okay, so what about insert? Best case scenario, insert. Somebody else who hasn't answered yet. I almost saw your hand raised. Okay, go ahead. Open. And why is that? Okay. Uh, your answer is correct, but I'm not quite sure about your explanation. So if you insert it at the beginning of the array, um, can, you, can you see through that? There's a problem with that. Let's say that you are inserting a number 20. All right. And now you're saying, well, I want to insert at the beginning of the array. Well, the beginning of the array is already occupied. So what do you do then? What do you do with this number? You're doing insert. You're not doing a replace. So if you're doing a replace, you could have just swap the 2 with the 20. And now you're doing an insert. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So because it's not sorted, you can just put it at the end of the array. Okay, so you can put it at the end of the array. You already should know the last element. Hopefully, I mean, there are some assumptions here. You're assuming that you're keeping track of where the current array is ending, right? So remember the USMS array example, I used a particular index, particular variable, which was keeping track of where the current uh, data is ending. Look okay, at the size of the array, of the filled array rather. So if you know the size of the array, which hopefully you should, then all you need to do is insert over here. And you're also making another assumption. Okay, so if I ever ask you, you know, state all your assumptions, then another assumption is that the array is actually has empty space. Okay, so the, the size of the array has space to accommodate. If it doesn't have space, then obviously you can't insert. Okay, so there are some assumptions which are there, uh, which are kind of logical assumptions. Okay, so the, the correct answer is, as you can see, is insert big O of one. Now, um, let's talk about the worst case because I think that's uh, a little easier, and then we can come back to the average case. What's the worst case uh, scenario? And that was, by the way, um, the best and the worst case, is there any difference, really? Should there be any difference between the average, the best and the worst case if you're inserting at the end? No, should all be the same, right? Simply because you're inserting regardless of the value of the, of the element that you're inserting, you're just putting it at the end. And it's an unsorted array. We don't really care where you put it, okay? So all three of these should be big of one. Can everybody follow that logic? Okay. So um, the best, the average, and the worst case for insert is all are all going to be bigger of one. Now I'm going to define delete star, which is a special operation, which basically is a delete with the assumption that you've already done a search and you already know where that particular element is located. Okay. So if you are uh, defining delete star uh, in the following manner, delete after a successful search, okay, then um, let's take a look at the best average in the worst case. So now can somebody tell me what would be the best case in this particular scenario? So basically we're saying that let's say we're trying to delete the number, number one, let's say, okay, now we've already done a search, 
the search has already responded by saying that one is present and it's located at a particular address or a particular index number and that should tell you the the address okay so now you already have the address of one now you're trying to delete it okay now now this now the, the answer to this question of course also depends on the algorithm that you're using for deletion okay so first um and, and let's say you're trying to come up with an intelligent a good algorithm right which is taking the least complexity so any thoughts on what would be a good algorithm to delete an element now again there are a bunch of assumptions i'm going to make Assumption, which should be logical, is that after deletion, you don't want any gaps in the array. Okay, so you want the data to be contiguous. So if you delete something, you don't want to leave that space empty. Okay, so that's another, that's an assumption. Um, so can you come up with an algorithm, a very simple trivial algorithm, um, which can delete and have a good complexity a uh, good complexity i mean you know as best as you can get so any thoughts on what would be a nice simple way of doing a deletion making sure that the gap in the array is filled yes okay so that is certainly one possibility all right I'm not saying it's the best, but yeah, it will work. So what you could do is create another array. Let's call that A prime. Okay. You copy everything. So you're copying two, you're copying 15, and you all, you want to delete this. So you delete this, and then you copy 10 in its place, right? Okay. And now the size of the array becomes one less. Okay. Let's say that if we do as suggested, and can I get your name, sorry? Yeah, right. So as Jack has suggested, he's got a specific algorithm. What would be the complexity of that? And you can answer or somebody else can answer. Okay. So let's think about the number of steps that would be involved in copying all of the elements. Now, again, we have this number n, which I'm assuming is sort of a default number, which generally indicates the size of, you know, size of the data structure. In this case, as you can imagine, the size of the data structure is simply the size of the array. Okay. So now, if you're going to copy all the elements into a new array, how many steps would that involve? If the size of the array is n. <coughs> Anybody? Yes. N operations, right? So the complexity of Jack's solution is going to be order of n for delete star. See, you found what you're looking for. And now Jack is suggesting that we make a new array and we copy all that data over and just don't copy the one that you want to delete. Perfectly good solution. But it has an order of n complexity. Can somebody come up with a better algorithm? Yes. OK, very good. Uh, what do you do about the gap? So now you, you do, you, you're saying, well, I'm going to take one. I'm going to copy it till the end of the array. So I'm doing an insert at the end. Is that what you're saying? Okay. But you still have a problem over here that you have a gap over here. Now we don't want to have any gaps. We want to have the data to be contiguous. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's the, the best solution uh, that I can think of. So what, uh, can I get your name? Yeah, Daniel, okay. So Daniel's solution is that we take the last element of the array and we swap it with the element that we've already searched for. And um, in this case, they happen to be adjacent, but uh, the, the element that we could be looking for could be anywhere, it could be the first element or something in the middle. So what he's suggesting is that we move 10 over here and one here. Um, no, sorry. Can you say that again, Daniel? 
What did what exactly did you suggest? Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. So we don't necessarily have to swap because we're actually trying to delete it. So what we could do is slightly shorter, one step or less, is that we could just take the last element and move it to the location that we're trying to delete. Okay, so that would be the simplest way. And now the question is, what is the complexity of Daniel's algorithm? So this is Jack's, or that has complexity of order of n. So complexity of Daniel's suggestion. Yes. Why is that? Right, exactly. So, so basically what you're doing is you've already found what you're looking for. You already know the location of the last element and you're simply taking the last element and you're putting it in the in place of the element that you found. You're going to do one more operation, which is reducing the size of the array. But all three of these element operations are going to be independent of n, the size of the array. The array could be n could be a million or a million to the power of million, you know, some humongous number. And these operations all would be independent of n. And if they're independent of n, they're essentially, regardless of whether they're three operations or 30 operations, they would still be considered as a constant. Okay, so very good. Uh, so, so the solution that we found is that we do the following operation. We don't need to create a new array. We simply do a, um, we simply take the last element, put it in place of the element that we want to delete, reduce the size of the array by one, three steps, two or three steps, and those are essentially constant time operations. Okay. And so we have our solution as a big O of one for delete star in the best case. Okay. Now the best case was when Actually, the element that we're looking for is right at the beginning. But does it really matter? Because we're saying we have already found the element that we're looking for. So is the best case any different from the worst case versus the average? No. So the, all three of them are going to be the same. Okay. So order of one, uh, they go of one. Okay. So let's see if, we, if we're getting... Uh, that right so yes i believe we have that right so as you can see uh the best case generally is not very interesting okay so the best case um in most scenarios um when you're talking about complexity we're not really talking about the best case the average case is also not very interesting because it's generally very similar to the worst case okay so both the best case and the average case in most scenarios are not going to be very interesting. And so we generally be going to be focusing on the worst case, okay? So if I don't mention um, the case, and I just say, well, what's the complexity of this algorithm? We're going to assume we're talking about the worst case. You can remember that. So you're not going to be seeing best and average um, for the rest of this lecture today, okay? We're going to be assuming that you're just talking about the worst case. So now let's do another comparison. And now what we're saying is uh, we want to compare um, two arrays. Uh, I should call them um, A and B. All right. So array A is the original array, which is unsorted. And now array B is sorted. Okay. So we're assuming that somehow the data has been sorted, pre-sorted in array B. Okay. And as you can see that here the data is unsorted and here the data is all sorted in ascending order or non-descending order. Now, um, we already know uh, what the complexities of, of this is. Uh, for the worst case, it's order of n. Um, um, for the worst case numbers, now insert is order of 1 and delete star is order of 1. If I got that right, yes. Okay, so now let's think about the sorted case. Any thoughts? What would be the worst case, worst case uh, complexity for doing a search 
in a sorted array. This should be based on something that we've already discussed in the lectures. You have to go think back to maybe fourth or fifth lecture, I don't know, but somewhere we did this analysis. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Daniel, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So um, O of O, o of log n. Do people agree or disagree with Daniel? I got your name right. Anybody people agree? Anybody disagrees? Okay, very good. So you remember your uh, your past lectures. So yes, it's going to be order of log n. And the base of the log is not going to be, it's not going to matter. All right, because as you know, uh, we discussed that in the past, uh, it's, it could be uh, log to the base two or log to the base uh, whatever doesn't really matter and that is generally not mentioned when you're talking about logs okay um very good so you could do because the data is sorted uh, the binary search knows the starting and the last element so what you do say let's say you the size of the the array where the data is kept is let's say 100 so you start looking in the middle and then you compare what you're look, looking for, is it bigger or smaller? And then you uh, look at in the appropriate half, you keep on halving at the search space, and eventually you should either be able to get it or you should be able to say, well, it's not there, okay? And this particular search should take order of log n. All right, now what about a insert? Now remember, we have to, the assumption is that this is a sorted array, and after you're doing an insert, it should remain sorted. Okay, and I would prefer if somebody who hasn't responded earlier can give it an attempt. Okay, go ahead. O of one. All right, can you explain that? Okay, but this is an, so you want to keep it sorted. So, did you have a different answer? No? Okay. Yes? No. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so this is not an insert star. It's an insert. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to figure out where to insert. Right now, how how much time is that going to take? So the search we already know is going to take big O of log n. So uh, let me say that the first part is to do a search. Okay. But that's not the end of it. Now, once you've done a search, you found the location in the array where you want to do the insert. Okay. Now you need to make sure that after you do the insert, the array is still sorted. So you can't just insert at the end of the array. Okay. Now this is the worst case. So think about what could be the worst case scenario. Yeah, well, let, let's see if somebody else can, can answer. Anybody else like to make an attempt? What would be the worst case scenario? Well, the worst case or whatever, doesn't really matter. Perhaps it's going to be similar, the answers, but we're trying to, so since think about this array. So we, we have this sorted data, and let's say we're trying to insert a number um, five, all right? So the first thing we do is we figure out the location. So the location, uh, we're going to say, well, it's going to be before 10, okay? So it's going to basically say, well, I'm going to search for five, and we're going to eventually say, well, five doesn't exist, uh, but we figured out through the binary search that it's between two and 10, okay? Between 101 and 102. So basically what we're saying is that to be able to insert a five, uh, we need to insert it at this location, right? But after doing the insert, the rest of the elements should remain sorted. So what do you need to do? So 
So, um, yeah, Daniel, if you want to give an answer. Yeah, so you'd have to shift everything down, okay? So inserting a five would mean that you insert five over here and you move 15 down by one and you move 10 down by one, okay? So uh, what's the worst case scenario? Yes. Yeah, so if you're inserting, for example, a zero, all right? So if you're trying to insert a zero, the worst case would be that, well, you'd have to move every element down by one. So that means that the complexity, and because you have to move n elements, each one of them down by one, what's the complexity going to be? O of n, right? So it comprises of two stages. The first stage is that you have to do a search. And the search is taking log of n. And the insertion is taking big O of n. So now, what's the overall complexity? Yes, big O of n, right? Because uh, log n is naturally a much smaller number, all right? So we're going to drop this. Uh, we're going to look for the highest power of n. And that's going to be big of n. Okay. So insert in a sorted array is not very good. So you can see some of these trade-offs coming in. Okay. So if you want to have an unsorted array versus a sorted array, now let's go through this delete star and then we'll talk about the pros and cons. Uh, what about delete star? Delete star basically says that you already found what you're looking for, and now you want to delete it. So what's the complexity and what's the algorithm going to be? Yeah, yeah. So basically that's going to be exactly the reverse of the insert. You found what you're looking for. So let's say the worst case is that you're looking for a one, you found it, and now you're going to uh, you're going to, you can't just take the last number and put it in one space because it has to be sorted. The sorting order has to be retained. And so you're going to have to move each one of these down by one. Okay. And you're going to reduce the size of the array by one. The size of the, of the contents of the array is going to be reduced by one. Okay. So um, that's big of N, N steps involved in moving everything down by one. Now, you could come up with better algorithms, actually, um, and I don't want to get into that, but uh, there could be something like a circular array, but I'm not going to go into that. But the, this is the simple analysis of a straightforward uh, array where uh, you're trying to do an insert, delete star, and a search. Okay, so now um, going back to my use cases, so let's say that if you had to make a decision whether to keep your data sorted in an array versus unsorted, which one would you prefer? And why? Or would it depend? So as you can see, one of them is not superior to the other. Why is that? Because, um, let me remove some of this, Docker. Okay, so here you have, um, you, you can see that the search for sorted array is superior than an unsorted array. But here, the insert and deletes are superior to the sorted array. So it's not clear which data structure would you use, or actually the data structure is the same, but the way you're keeping the contents inside the data structure are different. In one case, you're keeping the data sorted, in another case, you're keeping it as unsorted. So, which one would you prefer and why? And under what circumstances? Yes. So, um, in a, let's assume that all three are going to occur. Okay. And now you've got to think about probability, 
right? Think about statistics. You've hopefully you've all taken some probability course. If not, you're going to be taking one soon enough, I'm sure. So you're going to think about it in terms of uh, real world use cases. You're going to say, well, in this application, are going are we going to be having more searches as compared to inserts versus deletions? Okay. So if you're having more searches and you're only doing an insert or deletion, let's say you're doing an insert once, and maybe hopefully no deletion. So for example, in this class, you're initially adding all the students. So you're doing inserts once. Hopefully nobody's dropping out. So you're not doing any deletions, but if you are maybe 5% or 2% students delete, so that's very rare, but you're doing a lot of searches. So people are searching for, you know, you're searching for your records and trying to find you what your, your grade is. So everybody's doing searches. And you're doing that repeatedly over the entire semester. You, you know, every after every midterm, you find, want to find out what your grades are and so on. So you're doing a lot of searches. So in that particular scenario, what would you prefer? Which which data structure would you prefer? A lot of searches, very few insertions and deletions. Yeah, yeah. So you you prefer sorted array, right? Simply because this uh, this the probability of doing a search is a lot higher, okay? So you want to make sure that your overall time is, is, uh, is optimized, okay? But on the other hand, can somebody think of an application where you're doing very few searches, but a lot of inserts and deletions, or perhaps deletions? Very few searches. Can you think of any application, perhaps, that you might have come across? In your life, or a hypothetical space where you can not do any researches, yeah. Can, can you speak up? Sorry. A to-do list. Okay, very good. So, um, in a to-do list, are uh, you continuously inserting things? Okay, and you only deleting. So you only doing insert once, right? Uh, hopefully. Um, you doing a deletion once, um, and well, I'm not so sure. So in that case, also, you generally you you have to scan your to do list as well. So it, it's not very clear whether that's a good example, but but it might be difficult to come up with an example where you're doing very few searches and doing mostly insertions and deletions. But um, yeah, there are scenarios. Um, and one scenario that I can think of is that um, you're creating a huge data base, all right? And you're doing a lot of analysis on that, which doesn't require searches and uh, searches. Uh, and you never have to do a search, okay? So you're just dumping in data and then you're doing different kind of analysis, okay? So maybe something in machine learning. But uh, you do have to do insertions. Okay, so that's an example where you're never doing a search. So in that case, probably uh, if you're not doing any searches, then you know insert dominates and um, you need to have an unsorted array. Okay. So it depends. So it, so which, whenever you have uh, a data structure or a scenario where one is not superior to the other, then it depends on your application. Okay. Um, so that is an array analysis. Now let's think about a linked list. Okay. Now we we have enough uh, knowledge about a linked list um, to be able to hopefully answer this. Okay. So now the same two scenarios. In a linked list, let's say that you're keeping your data unsorted versus you're keeping it sorted. Okay. So here you have an unsorted linked list. Okay. And you're doing a search. What would be this, the complexity? It should hopefully be simple enough. If you have an unsorted linked list and you're doing a search, the size of the linked list is n. Uh, what would be this, the complexity? Yeah, they go of n. And why is that? Yeah, it's unsorted. So just like in an array, you just have to go through the entire linked list. Okay, let's do this sorted linked list at the same time. So what if you had a sorted linked list? Now remember, 
if you had a sorted array, we know that you can do it in log of n time. So what would be the amount of time that you would take to do a, a search in a sorted linked list? All the data is in ascending order, just like the example over here. So 1, 2, 10, 15, they're all sorted. Now you want to do a search, You're looking for some number, and um, you want to figure out, well, first what, the, what would be the algorithm, and then we figure out what the complexity is, right? Yes. Okay. So they go off log n using a binary search. Now, can we get your name, Thomas. So Thomas, can you tell me how would you do an um, actual binary search on this? So let's go through that process, okay? Okay, so, so let's just go step by step. What you're saying is that, let's say you're searching for the number 20, okay? And you say, you go to the center of the linked list and you say, you look up this number and you say, is this number smaller or larger than 20? But then that begs the question, how do I get to the center of the linked list? So you only have a head node pointer and you have a tail node pointer, all right? You don't have the address of the center node. And that's the difference between a linked list and an array. In an array, you can figure out the center address because it's all contiguous and each one of them is offset by the size of each element. In a linked list, it's a bunch of pointers. So you don't, unfortunately, you don't know unless you change this data structure, uh, you don't know a priori what is the address of the center. So does everybody see the problem here? So now, would you like to revise your complexity uh, statement? You think we can still do it in log n, and what would now be the algorithm? Yeah, so, gentlemen, uh, back, yeah. Open, and why is that? Yeah. So it's actually no different from an unsorted link list, right? You're doing exactly the same thing. You can't take advantage of the fact that it's sorted because you can't do a binary search on this, right? So it seems like it's, you know, it's, it's not a very good, it's not a very useful data structure. Or the, the way we keeping the data is not really giving us much of an advantage. The main advantage over here was that you could do a binary search, but unfortunately you can't do that in a linked list. Okay, and you just have to start with the head node or you could start, well, you can't start with the tail because that's the end, you can't go in the reverse direction. The only way you can do a search is start at the head node and keep doing a linear search, an iterative or recursive linear search until you either get to the end of the linked list or you find what you're looking for. Okay, so the, the sorting has absolutely no advantage over there. Okay, so big of N. Now let's talk about insertions. Okay, I hope everybody, if anybody is confused about anything, just let me know and we can repeat this. Okay, so now let's talk about insertions. What would be the worst case complexity of doing an insertion in an unsorted linked list? Yes. Okay, why is that? To the last slot, okay. And exactly how would you do that? Can you like give me the steps? So, so basically what we'd have to do is first of all, create a node, right? 
and that node could be at some arbitrary address. So this could be, let's say, at um, address 300, right? And we assign it the value. So we do an insert. So let's say we do an insert 20. We have 20 as a value. And then what we need to do is we need to insert it either at the tail or the head. But let's assume that we're doing the tail, okay? So what would we have to do? Well, basically we'd say, well, um, now this is unsorted, so we don't really care. Uh, we're simply going to say, well, we have the tail node. So the tail node's next pointer is now going to be pointing to 800. Um, and this guy is at the end, so we're going to make its next pointer to be null. Okay, so that's a simple insertion at the tail end. If you want to do an insertion at the head, and by the way, so so what would be the complexity of this operation? Can I get your name? I'm sorry. Uh, Aryan. Aryan. Okay. So how would you actually do the insertion? Can you? Um, what would be the complexity of that? Order one. Yeah, exactly. So so that I think you already said that, or somebody else said that. So that's going to be big of one simply because. The operations are constant. They don't depend on n, on the size of n. Okay, simply because you have the tail pointer and you can directly add something at the end. But if you didn't have a tail pointer, then you couldn't add at the end. Okay, then you could add at the beginning. Okay, so let's look at that. Well, you could simply say, well, you could create this uh, this node. Let's say it was still at three hundred, and now instead of uh, adding it at the end, what we could do is we could say, well, we have the head pointer and we could point the head pointer to 300. And um, the next pointer of this new node would be pointing to the head pointer. Okay, so before changing the head pointer, we would set the next pointer to point to 500. So that would be 500. And then you change the head pointer to point to 300. I think that's pretty much the only changes. And so again, that would be like two or three operations, and that would also be a constant time operation. Okay. So hopefully, if everybody has followed this, we can go to the next scenario. Okay. So in an unsorted linked list, the time complexity to an insertion either at the head or at the tail is going to be a big of one. Okay. Uh, what about in a sorted linked list? Yes. Right. Right. So if it was exactly well, since you're doing a search, okay. So the search is already taking big of n. Now, hopefully, what you're doing next is not more than n. So it's going to be a big of n to do a search, all right? And then you're do, going to do an insertion. Now, let's say that, the, um, that it wasn't at the end and it was somewhere over here, okay? And you want to do an insert of, let's say, the number five. So how would you do that? Well, you would first of all create a node, all right? Uh, let's say that this particular node that you've just created is, let's say, at location 200. Um, and then um, you need to insert this in the middle. So you need to keep a track of the pointer. So you hopefully, once you've you found this, you're also keeping track of the previous node. And this is the next node or the current node. So you have two pointers. Let's say you have the current node and a pointer to the previous node. Okay. So what you do is the previous node's next pointer is now going to point to 200 and the new nodes next pointer is going to point to the current node okay so you can see that now you've inserted a node in the middle but if you're keeping track of the previous and the current pointers then those are constant time operations so basically the main problem here is doing a search Okay, so once the search is completed, you've already got an order of n complexity. 
okay? And then we do an insertion, which is going to take an order of one. And the sum total of big O of one plus N is a big O of N. Okay, did everybody follow that? Any questions? So when you're doing an insertion in a sorted linked list, you are assuming, we are assuming that you don't have the search done. So you're doing the search. Once you've done the search, you're basically inserting. The actual insertion is taking big off one, but the search is unfortunately taking big off n. Okay. Now the delete star uh, takes the scenario where you've already found what you're looking for. Okay. So how long is that going to take for the unsorted versus the sorted case? So in the unsorted linked list, you found what you're looking for. Okay, so here now, it's sort of the opposite of doing an insertion, but let's say you found what you're looking for, you were searching for, you trying to delete number 10. Okay. You already know the address 750. Okay, so let's say that you have a pointer to this particular location, you've already found it through a search. Now you want to delete that. So how long is that going to take? Yeah, they go off one, all right, and why? Yeah, so this is going to change to 800. And so that basically is going to bypass this. Uh, that's about the only thing that you actually need to do. As long as you're keeping track of the previous node while you're doing the search, then all you need to do is a single change, which is changing the next node pointer of the previous node to the current node's next pointer. Okay, you then you don't really have to do anything over here. That the uh, you know, garbage collector will hopefully clear, clean that up. So that's a big O of one, but that's delete star, remember? It's not delete, it's a delete star where you've already done the search. Uh, what about in a sorted linked list? Delete star? Any different? No, it shouldn't be any different because basically you've already found what you're looking for and you do exactly the same operation. Right. So it doesn't matter whether it's sorted or unsorted, you're basically removing an element, removing a node from a linked list. Okay. So both of these are going to be big of one. All right. Yes. Uh, I'm just doing it that way uh, because I want to be able to show you the difference between an operation which is a composite operation to so insert. I'm showing it sort of as a composite operation. Uh, I could also have another operation called insert star, right? But you know, if you've done delete star, then you know insert star. So I'm just trying to show you two versions of the same operation, one with and another without search. Okay. Um, now I've also got another row over here which says memory utilization. Okay. Now, memory utilization um, is a complex term because it sort of needs some explanation. What exactly do we mean by memory utilization, right? Now, I'm going to explain this to you because there's too many assumptions over here. But basically what I'm saying is that um, if I show that over here, so I think we've got the same results over here, yeah. So basically what I'm saying is that I'm going to categorize the arrays as being wasteful. And I'm going to categorize the linked list as being efficient. And here, the, the explanation for that is that, again, that particular use case where you don't know how, how many elements you're going to have. So in the, in the sorted, in sort, sorry, in the array case, you've got to create a really large array to avoid the scenario where somehow, you know, you run out of space. Okay, so you're creating a really large array, and so that is basically becoming wasteful. In a linked list, it's efficient because uh, 
you are not creating any pre-sized linked list. Okay, as soon as you get a new element, you simply create a new node and you insert it. Okay, so in that sense, it's it's more efficient. But is that the end of the story? Is there is there any way that actually a linked list is more wasteful than an array in some ways? Let, let's think of a scenario where you know that there are only going to be, let's say, 500 students, okay? Um, and you're going to have exactly 500 students, all right, in this class. So then would you want to use an array to store the PIDs or would you want to use a linked list? So you're shaking your head, which one would you prefer? Yeah. Right. So, so it's actually going to be, it's going to take up half as much space because half of the space in the linked list is actually for pointers. And you don't need pointers if you're having those, that data uh, stored in an array. So arrays versus linked lists, the, the memory utilization, um, it's there's a trade off. But when I say wasteful, uh, I'm thinking of a particular scenario. All right. So the background is over here, I'm assuming that we don't know what the size of the data is. So in the array case, we sort of over have an overkill where you create a really large array. And a linked list is more efficient in that sense, because even though it has an overhead of pointers, but perhaps that overhead is small as compared to creating a really large array. So that's sort of the background explanation of why uh, this can be considered as being more efficient uh, versus an array being more wasteful. But, but it requires some explanation, okay? And it, you could have the opposite uh, explanation, but as long as the explanation makes sense, then you could have a different, uh, you know, different um, analysis over here, okay? All right, so, so that was basically uh, the performance comparison that I wanted to do, and that is something that is going to come in handy in the, in the coming exam. And unless there are any questions about complexity, I'm going to move on, all right? Your last chance to have questions. Well, you're going to have the tutorials which you must have there. Okay. So, um, so one more analysis. So, um, what are the pros and cons in general of arrays versus linked lists? And of course, the pros over here will basically be the cons over here. So let's just forget about the cons over here. Let's just think about the advantages of arrays and the advantages of linked lists. So some of these we've already said. Okay. So if you look at of this analysis, you can see that um, if you're doing a search, then an array uh, which is sorted could be an advantage. Okay. However, this could be a problem. Okay. So the basic pros and cons are as follows. Okay. Some of the operations are actually faster in an array. They can be log of n. Okay. Uh, as you can see over here, you have um, some of these operations are actually faster. So this is superior. Uh, this is not really superior because then you could say, well, I could have an unsorted array and the insert would also take order of one. So in terms of these operations, it's, overall, it seems like the arrays are actually superior. Okay, either picking a sorted array or an unsorted array. Uh, if you have a sorted array, um, then uh, it has it's superior in terms of the search but if you have an unsorted array it's superior in terms of insert and delete okay so it's not clear whether uh, there is any advantage to having a linked list if you're looking at the operations okay so uh, several of the operations are actually faster in array okay um the big advantage over here is that it's better better mem memory utilization okay so especially when you don't know the size of the the data 
uh, the array can be really wasteful. Okay, so this can be very uh, wasteful for memory utilization as well. Okay. Um, now, a couple of other things that I would want to mention is that the arrays are simpler to code. As you'll see, you know, if you're talking about an array, it's a lot easier to deal with that. Okay. But in a linked list, you, you've already seen the code and you know that it's not that easy, right? You have to worry about pointers. No pointers in the array case. So the, so the code is simpler, okay? Uh, and here there's more complexity in terms of the code. And a very major advantage that we're going to be really focusing on in the rest of this course is the flexibility, okay? So you might say, well, what's really the advantage of having a linked list? It seems to be, you know, Apart from the fact that it's sometimes in some scenarios it's, it's, it's more efficient, but here it, it doesn't really have a big advantage. So the big advantage over here is the flexibility. Okay, and we're going to see the flexibility as we go into more complex data structures. All right, that's basically what we're going to be doing in the rest of this course is going to look at more complex data structures and how the concept of a linked list comes in handy over there. And arrays are not going to be too useful in most of the data structures we're going to be looking at. Okay, so flexibility is a major advantage uh, for linked list. So if I go back to this particular use case again, so what's the answer over here? The answer depends. Okay, it depends on the scenario. Uh, it depends on whether you're having more searches or you're having more insertions or more deletions. And actually, the answer is a fairly complex one. You have to actually present, not that I'm going to ask you such a complex question, but I could ask you a you know, subset of that question. In this particular scenario, what would be the best uh, data structure? Okay. So you have to think about that, that if there are a lot of searches, then what would be the da best data structure? Okay. If, uh, you know, given a particular scenario, what, which uh, data structure would be the best and you've got four particular scenarios over here uh, that you could think of okay the data structures are two but the actual data is being kept in two different ways as well that's why you have four different scenarios okay so um that completes the complexity analysis and now let's go back let's go forward and now i'm going to go and continue on yes So um, for a sorted linked list, the main advantage would be that um, if you, yeah, if you think about, yeah, that's a good question. So if you would say, what's the advantage of having a sorted linked list over an unsorted linked list, right now there doesn't seem to be any, right? I mean, this is just as efficient. So this C is clearly superior to D in the current analysis, okay? And why is it superior? Because here the insertion is big of one versus the insertion is big of n. And here it doesn't, it doesn't have the advantage of being able to do a binary search. So that's a very good uh, analysis that C is clearly superior to D. Okay. But other than that, uh, there is no clear superiority of either A, B, or C on either one of those. Okay. Because there's always some trade off. Okay. Good. Uh, so let's go on, and now I'm going to continue on with um, where we left off on the linked list. And now, hopefully by now, some of you at least have seen two versions of the implementation of a linked list. The first version was what I showed you, my code, and the second version is hopefully if you've downloaded the assignment number three, which I know uh, quite a few of you have already uh, been able to um, submit that and get full marks. So um, there are two different versions and they, their code is of course different, okay? But I'm going to continue on with my version. So that's different from the assignment number three. And so let's do a quick review of where uh, I left off on this. So we said, well, in this particular scenario, um, we had the following data structure. We had um, the user program, uh, the linked list interface, uh, the linked list implementation, and a node. The node didn't have an interface, uh, only the linked list had an interface. 
Okay. Um, I also uh, asked you this particular question earlier on, and I said, well, which one of these is going to be most difficult to implement? And now you see why delete is the most difficult method to implement as we go forward. Okay, so we're just going to be looking at delete today. Uh, remember that we had a class of a node, so it had a value and a next node. Okay, that's kind of obvious. Uh, we had an interface for the linked list and the linked list implementation a list which is implementing the interface had a couple of fields there was a head and a tail field. okay and then we went over insertions and so on uh, we've already done those so let's take a look at now the deletions now deletions are more complex because they're what, a more, what can be referred to as more boundary cases, okay? More special scenarios. And they all have to be unfortunately be handled differently because uh, number one, we've got a head pointer which needs to be managed. And unfortunately I've also used a tail pointer. So when you're doing deletions, you've got to be able to manage those pointers and make sure that they are still, after that deletion operation, they're still pointing at the right places. Okay, so there's going to be a whole bunch of boundary cases. So let's start with the first boundary case, which is the case where the linked list happens to be empty. Okay, so how are we going to implement that? We're going to have a check. We're going to say, well, if the head is null, then clearly it's empty. Okay, and we're going to assume that the tail is also pointing to a null pointer. So we're simply going to return a false because we're saying, well, we can't delete something in an empty linked list. So that is case one. Case two is where it's not empty. Okay, and I've arbitrarily defined these cases. You could come up with your own definitions. So I'm saying case two is a non-empty case. And case two A is a case where it's non-empty and it's a single node. Okay. So um, what would you do? For a single node. If you wanted to delete that, can somebody just go through the, the steps? If you want to delete a particular value, um, this was kind of simple. You just check whether you know, the head is null. But in this case, uh, what would you do? Can somebody sort of, can somebody sort of uh, give an outline of, of, the, of the steps that you would take to address this particular scenario? Um, okay, go ahead, Tanya. Uh, yeah, this particular scenario. Yeah, right. But before that, you would simply have a check and you'd say, well, is the head and the tail pointing, is the tail pointing to the head? Okay, because you, there are going to be more cases. So to make sure that it's a single node, you say, well, is the head and the tail equal to each other? Uh, because clearly we've already gone over this scenario, so it's not empty, they're not both null. So in this case, basically we're saying if the head and the tail are, point, are equal to each other, then we have the scenario where it's a single node, okay? If it's a single node, then we simply set the head and the tail equal to null, okay? And we return a true because uh, it is expecting a Boolean response after you do the deletion. If that is not the case, then clearly, um, uh, it's going to be a null. Uh, sorry, it's going to be a false return. Okay. So now, after you've deleted this particular node, your linked list is going to be uh, the first scenario, which is going to basically be uh, a null linked list. So that is case 2A. Case 2 being uh, where you have a non-empty linked list, and 2A is where um, it is non-empty, but there is only one item, okay? Now, case 2B is a scenario where you have more than one item. Now, again, you have to have some special cases, right? So now I'm saying 2B.1, so I'm coming up with you know, my own classification. And this is the scenario where you have more than two nodes, more than one node, and the node that you're going to delete is the first node. Okay. So now you can imagine the kind of checks that you'll have is, well, you'd say, 
this is the case where there's more than one node because we've already excluded those earlier cases above. This is the else scenario. And we're saying now what you're looking for is at the head of the linked list. So the head's value is equal to the value that you're looking for. Okay. So if that is the case, you're going to set the head to point to the next node. So now we're going to change this to point to the next node. That's all we have to do, right? And then we return it true. Okay. If that is not the case, then we need to continue to go keep going down that linked list. Okay. So if that is not the case, then this is now the complexes. This is the sort of the general case. And you can imagine that the general case is the most complex, but then you have to, to be able to get to that general case you have to first filter out all the other scenarios, okay? So now the general case, um, can somebody tell me what would be the code for this? And now I'm already telling you, but let's assume you're keeping track of a previous pointer and you're keeping track of the current pointer. So now you have two pointers and now these pointers are going to come in handy in the next assignment as well, because you're going to be doing various operations with a linked list, so you have to be able to manage different pointers. Sometimes you'll have two pointers. In some operations, you may actually need three pointers, as I already uh, you know, gave you a hint in the last lecture. So let's assume that now you're keeping track of a previous pointer and a current pointer. Okay? The current pointer is basically the node that you're looking at, and you're saying, well, is that, uh, is that, you know, does that value match up, match up with the value that you're trying to delete? Okay? So now, can somebody give me an idea as to what would be the code? Somebody besides Daniel? Yes, okay. Uh, yes, uh, unless there's somebody else with the hand raised. I forgot your name, sorry. Ar Arvin? Yeah. Ariel, Ariel. I'll, I'll get that eventually, I'm sorry. <laughs> Previous is equal to current dot next node. Is previous when we say that, that's a very good attempt. Okay. So basically what you're saying is that we ultimately, if we found what we're looking for, if the current value field is matching up with the value, then we basically got to set the and you said we said the previous to be the current dot next node, did you say? That's almost right, not quite. You can't set the previous itself. Can somebody slightly modify that? Um, so what Ariel, I think, is suggesting is that let's say we've got pre, previous is the node, the previous is the pointer. We're setting P is equal to current dot next node. I'm going to abbreviate these because my handwriting isn't too good. So previous is equal to current dot next node. Is this statement correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it's not going to be previous is equal to current dot next node. It's going to be previous dot next node is going to be current dot next node. Does everybody follow that? You agree? Okay. So we're going to set, we're going to change this particular address over here. So this is going to be previous dot next node is going to be equal to the current dot next node. So this is going to be changed to 800. Where did we get 800 from? It's the current dot next node value. Okay, so basically we got to make that change. But there are there's going to be some code before and after that. Okay, there's going to be a bunch of code before we get to that uh, that final context. But so let's take a look at that. It's it's quite a few lines of code. So we need to keep track of the previous node and the current node. So how do we do that? So initially, what we'll do is we'll do we'll start by saying the pre we we start by initializing a previous node to be of type node, 
and we're going to point it to the head. All right. And we're going to set the current node to be the next node. Okay, or head dot next node or previous dot next node. Okay, so now we've initialized the previous node and the current node. Okay, now we're saying if the current node is not equal to null, which means that there is a node, th there's at least two nodes, because the current node, if it was null, that it would imply that there's only one node. Okay, that that's head. Okay. So if the current node is not null, then we're going to check its value. If its value matches up with what we're looking for. Okay. If that is the case, then this is the key, the heart of this algorithm. Basically, we're setting the previous dot next node to be equal to current dot next node. Okay. And that's this change over here. Okay. Previous dot next node is going to be set to current dot next node. Okay, so that that's the main change. Now you've got to keep track of additional stuff. Now, what if the current the node that you're looking at was the last node? Okay, so current or next node is null. In that case, you've got to keep track of the tail the tail pointer as well. Okay, so these are the special scenarios. So now the, the tail pointer, because basically what we're saying is that this particular here scenario is is saying well what if we're deleting this last node okay so what we've done is this was a null so we've changed 800 to point to be equal to this which is fine so this becomes a null but now the tail pointer has to be changed over here in this scenario so these are all special boundary cases and and this um unfortunately in computer science uh you're going to come across this, these problems over and over again. Okay, if you're going to be a computer science major, you'd better be ready to handle these scenarios. Okay, and this is where if you don't deal with them, you're going to have a, a bug in your code, and you won't come across that bug in most scenarios. But when you're giving a big presentation to a thousand, an auditorium of a thousand, and when your Windows crashes, that's when you're going to find out ah, this was that particular bug. Okay, so you don't you want to avoid that particular scenario. Okay. So, um, and the only way to figure out whether your code has bugs is unfortunately, uh, it's not easy. Okay, so you have to do a whole bunch of, you know, rigorous tests and think of all the possible scenarios and, you know, do random tests and so on. Or you just have your instructor give you a great scope assignment which checks all those weird scenarios. Okay? But uh, in our code, a lot of times we are not checking all the boundary cases. Okay, so your code may have some bugs and you may still get 100%. Okay, that doesn't mean that in real life you're going to get away with that. Okay, so, um, so what else? So, so we've done this, we've set the tail to be the current pointer. We're going to return a true in this scenario. If that wasn't the case and we need to keep going forward, then we change these pointers. So, previous now becomes current. And current becomes current dot next node. So now we we going we, we know we're now doing an iterative search, okay, for the node that we trying to delete. This is not recursive; it's an iterative search. So this is a non-recursive search and deletion. Okay. Eventually, uh, if none of this uh, is able to search and find what we're looking for, we simply return a false. Okay. So that uh, is pretty much uh, what we're going to cover before the midterm um, and this is basically summarizing all the scenarios um, so if i had mentioned that we're going to be covering doubly linked list now we're not covering doubly linked list in the exams so this is the point where we're going to end